Right, let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And uh, we're going to do part 2 of um, Itching Ears and Fables. Itching Ears and Fables, which we started talking about last, last week. As Paul is ready to depart from this world at the time when he was writing this and as he's getting ready to um, to die and um, as he's kept the faith as he's fight the good fight of faith he's finished his course he's doing all these things there's some last instructions that Paul gives to Timothy but you know ultimately and not to Timothy only it ultimately becomes our charge as the body of Christ today we have a charge and our charge is there in verse chapter 4 verse 1 as I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing at his kingdom. The churches preach the what? Why do we preach the word? Because it's the word that God, with the word of God that we preach, is that God uses to truly furnish us unto all good works. It's to, that's why we need to preach the word. It's what works in us, okay? He says, be instant in season, out of season, reproof, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Father, we pray that we will, as we consider your word this morning, as we considered it right now, we pray as we will not turn our ears from the truth, but as that we will preach your word, and as your word will be preached, rightly divided, that it, we understand, know it, it's that that works in us that believes. We believe and understand that you work in us by your spirit through your word, effectually work in us and to produce in us what you desire to do so for us as the body of Christ. And so we pray that we will preach your word and will be true to your word, that we will not preach fables, and that we will not be turned to fables, but we will preach the truth, and not, and not turn away from that. As we pray this by Christ with thanksgiving, amen. So last week when we started talking about the subject of itching ears and fables, um, we, we went through a few um, subjects, and I'm not going to re repeat that, but we talked about the time will come when they shall not, will not endure sound doctrine. And we looked at, the, we talked quickly about the last days and perilous times. We talked about that a little bit. And then we'll talk about the issue of the not enduring sound doctrine. Endure, it means to allow, to healthy affect them. To affect them healthy. And to affect them in their walk, in their light. And we went through some passages in Jeremiah and Galatians. And, and brother, brother Tim was using that message, that, that, that verse this morning about, you know, have I become, he says, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the what? the truth lots of people we know and understand in life as we tell them the truth as we speak the truth to them they don't want to hear it the reason why they don't want to hear it because it reproves them it rebukes them uh, it affects them okay and especially when they're wrong and when they're in error but does that mean we should not be preaching sound doctrine no we should be preaching it and the reason why we need to continue to preach of that and 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 not because these people will not hear these things Look at, verse, look at verse 3 there. He says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. So the question I have this morning is, Who is they? And we talked about that last week. Who are they? Who is they that don't endure sound doctrine? It's somebody that's exposed to sound doctrine and don't want to endure it anymore. The church would not want to endure sound doctrine anymore because that's the sign of perilous times. That's the sign of last days. They will not endure it anymore. Okay, and they shall turn themselves each uh, teachers having itching ears. Okay, they shall heap themselves. I mean, they shall gather all these teachers. We talked about that last week, and we can't go through all the details of that again this morning. Okay, we talked about the nation of Israel lusting after these things that the nations had, and how they lusted in, the, in also in the wilderness after quails and all these things, and were always complaining. You know, wanting something to satisfy their flesh. Okay, they don't want sound doctrine anymore. 
last time we spoke, we, in the last time we were here, and I think this is, the, this is the state that we have in the church today. They don't want to endure sound doctrine anymore. In Isaiah chapter 30, I've seen, I've seen people, I have conversations with pastors, I have a conversation with a guy that was my, um, my pastor many years ago about not preaching the word rightly divided anymore, but really, really starting to preach messages that is comfort messages. You know, and it just means I just... Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with comforting some one another, but the message is always about a comfort message or a, a message... There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a... It's like life messages. I'm going to use this, just give you these messages and make... I'm not going to tell you you're doing anything wrong, but I'm going to tell you God has done everything for you. You know, so they will not... Because they don't want to offend anybody. They don't, you know, and so, so they just they start preaching messages that are just that's going to what you want to hear, you know, and what's going to make you feel good about yourself, you know, and and so they forsake the rock. And I have a conversation with us with um, with my with my um, overseeing elder, the one that's in the office of a bishop, and I was speaking to him, and I said, you know, we need to start because we, we were taking in. I mean, we went for a church from 60 people. We went to a church for 300 plus families, then 400 families. We were, every month we were taking 30 new, new, new members into membership. Okay, now we don't have a membership yet, so don't worry about that, okay? But we took new members into membership, and I said, we're taking all these members in, but they don't even know what we preach. They don't even know the word rightly divided. They don't know what we stand for, but they join us. And we need to start teaching these things. And his, his words to me was, you're right. We need to start. He says, I'm going to have to start. We're going to have to start doing it even if it means we lose half of our people. What was he saying to me? He's saying to me, his message was a watered down message. was a diluted message. Because his message is to keep the people in there. Not the people, not because we have now suddenly fancy buildings and, and sports centers and schools and all these things. We need to make sure we can pay for all of this. And so we can't say anything offensive to the people. Because if we say offensive, it's going to hurt us in the pocket. So let's preach what they want to hear. And I, I couldn't stay there anymore. I had to leave. Okay. And Isaiah chapter 30. And Isaiah chapter 30. And Isaiah chapter 30. Let's go read from verse 8 there. And verse 10 is the one I want to get to. They want to, something that they want to hear things that will appease them. The nation of Israel was in the same, it was our example, our examples. That's, that's who they were. Verse 8 says, Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. His own people don't want to hear God's law. So he says, write it in a book. Verse 10 says, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy the seeds, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease, cause the Holy One from Israel to cease before us. So they want to hear things that are smooth, not, speech, not things that are going to address them and say, you are lying children, you're a rebellious people. No, don't talk us that way. Say to us smooth things. Don't see what God wants you to see. And don't prophesy what God wants you to prophesy. Rather, just speak to us smooth things. And then they kill their own prophets when they speak the truth to them. But they will accumulate, they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. As I said last week, the fact is that the church will and has turned from the truth and embrace anything that will please them and not allow them to be an offense uh, uh, not allow them to be an offense to the world conforming to the world they're not going to want to hear that anymore so we're going to conform the church the church will be conforming to the world paul says be ye not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind but the church will conform to this world because they don't want to be an offense to the world because of an offense to the world people will they will suffer affliction they will suffer persecution and because of that they're not going to say certain things and last week i said a few things that you i don't not going to necessarily repeat them again this morning but pretty some harsh things and people and and <laughs> you know it didn't take long for us to have a dislike on our youtube channel because of what has been said i'm sure you know 
And I want to just assure you something too, you know, people, people, you know, because I talked about the, I talk about lesbian and, and, and I'm talking about gay marriages and lesbian marriage and, and gay preachers marrying gay people and things like that. You know, I just want to make sure that is an abomination to the Lord. But let me tell you something, you know what? I don't hate lesbian and gay people like I don't hate anybody else. I want them to hear the truth. I maybe not, I don't disagree, I don't agree with their lifestyle, I, I disagree with their, their contrary to God's word, but they need the gospel as much as anybody else needs the gospel. Okay? But when it comes to the church saying we will not talk about what is right in God's eyes and what God's word is teaching because we don't want, we want to appease people and we want to tell them smooth things that's not going to be, that we won't be offensive to them, that's a problem. Paul says that's going to happen. And for that reason we have to preach the truth. That's the reality of it. I have a family member that I love dearly that is openly gay. And I love the person greatly. But I disagree with his lifestyle. I disagree with his, his views and what he thinks God's word is saying or not saying or, or forsaking God's word. I have a problem with that. But I, I'm kind, tender-hearted, straight if I need to be. You know, but I'm not going to allow that to come into the local church and be the platform of what we need to embrace as the local church, which is contrary to God's word. That's a different thing. I don't see them as my enemies, but I see them as my enemies when they want to enforce me to tell me not to preach what God's word is saying. Then they become my enemies because they're contrary to God's word. You understand what I'm saying? That's the reality of it. Go with me to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. The fact is that I said to you last week, the sad thing is very, lots of teachers and preachers have embraced this in order to commend themselves because they preach themselves, they don't preach Christ and Him crucified. That's the reality of it. And they're deceiving and they are being deceived. The very things that Paul has talked about in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Deceive and being deceived. They wax grows, they will wax worse and worse. Being deceived, uh, deceiving and, be, and, 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 and being deceived. In Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. You turn away from God's word, even your prayer is an abomination. Why? Because you will not be praying according to what God's word is saying. Proverbs 15 verse 17. Oh, not Proverbs, I'm sorry. Not Proverbs, Psalms. Psalms 50. And verse 17. This is the nation of Israel. You hear me ref refer to this verse on a regular basis. On a, and, and every now and then I refer to this verse. In Psalm 50 verse 17, talking about God's people, so-called people, the nation of Israel. Seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Speak to us smooth things. Don't see, don't prophesy. Just speak to us smooth things. That's going to be nice to the ears and tickle the ears and make me feel good and warmy and ooey and everything else. So what do you need to do to do that? You have to cast God's word aside and not preach the word anymore, which Paul says we have to preach. Let me tell you, it's not easy having to preach things when you know you're preaching it and there's people out there hating every word that you're saying going to be dis discrediting you and, dis and, and, and talk negatively about you with, with Brother Tim was talking about this morning. Do you think I like people talking negatively about me? I like people criticizing me because I, uh, and, and calling me certain names? I don't enjoy that at all. But I cannot, if I, but if I don't preach God's word, then I can maybe say things to you that's going to make you feel comfortable and all doing, tell you fables and stories and dilute God's word so that you can feel comfortable. But I will be failing what God tells me to do, that His charges to me, is to preach the word. 
When I get to certain passages in the Bible, I, don't have, I should not be jumping two or three verses because there's somebody that I might offend because that verses are going to address them. I need to stick with the text and preach the text because it's not my view, it's God's view. It's what God says. And by the way, my view will be in light of what God's Word is saying always. Always. I was talking to Jean this morning, coming to church, or driving up here to the fellowship and where the church comes together. And we were talking about, you know, the love of money being the root of all evil. The love of money, not money, but the love of money. You know, but some covered often. That's what's happening with preachers today. They have, they, 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 people heap themselves teachers having each and years. They have teachers that will teach to them that they want a year, and those guys get good money. I could walk out of here, and if, if, I, I was, if I was loving money, you know, and I tell you what, I would not be standing here this morning, I'm telling you that much. I'll be somewhere else preaching to itching ears, and make sure that I have a thousand or two thousand or three thousand people in an assembly that pays me a good salary, gives me a, a bigger house, big cars and everything else, because God wants his, you know... I gotta have to be prosperous, you know. I put peace, health, wealth, and prosperity, and I will guilt you to to give, so I can fill my coffers, and I'll preach just enough so that you won't get mad at me, so that I can get still the money. But that's not what I'm doing. Oh, that's and I pray that I never do that. They cast God's word behind them. When you and I preach the word, we don't do it with smooth sayings. And now what? And now we already know, just from my dialect and the way that I talk and the way that I construct my grammar and the way all that stuff. And every one of you, not every one of you, but many of you on a regular basis, try and help me write and say you don't say that, you don't say that. Like yeah, and, and I'll try, I'll try. You know. By the way, you don't say bless it. Who says blessed? We sing blessed assurance, but you don't say blessed. The right word is blessed. Not blessed. Blessed. But, I don't care if it's blessed or blessed. It's the same thing to me. I understand what you're saying. And I'm not going to think the whole service about now, oh, blessed, blessed instead of blessed. Why does she pronounce it? I get that all the time, by the way, you know, brother. That's not how you pronounce that. And that's not any... Oh, man, I tell you what. And I know that I don't come with excellency of speech. That's something I do know. You know? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. When we come, we don't come with smooth sayings. You know, I don't have that guy's ability to speak to a public and flicker my eyes and put a big old Colgate smile on and preach to you smooth things. I don't have that ability. I have already been defined as, uh, you know, my preaching style has been defined. Somebody has defined my preaching style. You know what, like what? Like a bull in a china shop. That's how they preach good while, you know, I come, you know, it's like that. And so, as long as you don't listen to me, just hear the word of God, okay? Anyway, what can I say? Not eloquent at all. Look at first, second, first Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That's what I said. Corinthians, right? I'm sorry. I know what we're in Timothy, but um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of our God. Guess what? Paul identifies when he comes to the saints, he says, I don't come with excellency of speech. Or of wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If there's one thing that I would like to know and that you need, need to want to know also among the saints is Christ and Him crucified. The simplicity of the gospel. Keep with that. Stick with that. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Let me tell you something, I can identify with that. Every time I stand up here 
Every time I stand and preach the Word of God, I don't come overconfident. There is a weakness. There's a fear. Not a spirit of fear. But there's a fear of me messing up what God's Word is saying. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. When Paul spoke, it was not with enticing word of man's wisdom, but was it, 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 you know it, it came straight forward with power and demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Because when you preach the Word of God and people hear it and they trust it and believe it, it changes them. It's got the power to take you from damnation to eternal life, to take you from Adam into Christ, to take you from dead in trespasses and sin to be quickened. The Word of God working in us. And that's why we have to preach the Word. Not our ideas, not our philosophies, but the Word. The simplicity that is in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 he says, For Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross should remain of none effect. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross be should remain of none effect. You see, when I come with the wisdom of words and I spend my time in the week as I'm preparing for a message and I want to try to put some nice phrases and nice words and nice flowing things together, you know what's going to happen at the end of the day? I'm not going to preach you the cross. I'm going to start preaching you my fancy flowing words. And of course my focus is going to be the, the wisdom of words, but instead I need to preach Christ the cross lest the cross of Christ should be none effect it's very simple Christ died for our sins was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures how simple on that can you get God has gave us the gift of eternal life all those that believe and trust look at Romans chapter 16 go to one page back you're in 1 Corinthians 1 go one page back or go over to the next page where you see it in Romans chapter 16, Paul is talking about man's wisdom. Deceive. Deceiving what man does like to deceive. In verse 18 in chapter 16, Paul says, Look at verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the what? To the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Why? Because they're contrary to the doctrine. And if they contrary to the doctrine, what should you do? Avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the what? The simple. They're deceiving. They are deceiving, deceived and they are being deceived. They will wax more, worse and worse. So you and I, when we speak, you know, that not, should not be our motivation, that our own belly, what we what gratify self. And with good words and fair speeches, we deceive the heart of the simple. And we're going to talk about this in a little bit here. When you and I preach anything less than the Word of God, we are deceiving. When we preach anything less what God's Word is saying, in any form of diluting it, because Satan's policy of evil, his plan of evil is to dilute God's Word. To, to, to change it, to take away, to add to it. We are deceiving people. We assert our own belly because we, well, by fair speeches, all I'm looking at is to gratify myself and serve myself. My agenda. As a preacher of a local assembly and as an overseer of a local assembly, the last thing that I ever want to be referred to as is the boss. I was in churches where the preacher was referred to as the boss. We, does it, it doesn't matter what, you know, and, and, I, and by the way, it, it maddens me when I'm talking to you guys and, and we, we talk about what we want to do and you say, Listen, you know, whatever you want to do. It's not about me. It's us, the body of Christ. It's not me. I'm not the boss. 
As a matter of fact, if you want to look in the order of the local church, you have saints, deacons, and then the bishops at the bottom. It's not the other way around. Churches function and set their ministry up around the preacher, not around the Word of God. I told you about this conversation. I don't know why it's coming up to my mind, but I'll share it with you. I had a conversation on a plane one time flying back from Kenya. And I, was, I was worn out. I was tired. I was going to go home. It's about a four-hour flight to Johannesburg and another two-hour flight home from there. And I was lying in Nairobi, get on the plane, and we got on the plane, and this lady clambered next to me, and we were in the exit row, you know, when those doors that can go on the wings. So the, the, the air hostess comes towards us, and um, she says, um, in a, an event of an emergency, you know the whole thing, they say, in an event of an emergency, would you be prepared to open the door, and can you do it? Are you physically able to do it? Blah, 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 blah. And I said, yeah, no problem. And she says, oh, no, stop, stop, to the air stewardess. She's, and, and the stewardess looked at her and she says, the Jesus in me will never allow this plane to go down. And I'm like, oh, four hours. It's going to be a long time, <laughs> you know. And so we started, you know, I chatted a little bit, you know, tried to engage in some conversation. And, and she keeps on talking about her pastor. Her pastor is giving them this book, Benny Hinn, to read and to study and stuff. And she's quoting Benny Hinn and her pastor and her pastor and her pastor. And I'm just listening and listening. And I'm like, yeah, but is that, you know, no, no, no. And eventually I'm like, okay, lady, you want a Bible study? We're going to have a Bible study. So I excused myself, got up. Go with the overhead because you're not allowed to put your bags in the front of you. And so I got over it. I took my Bible out. I brought my old Bible, put it out there. And I said, okay, we've been talking about your pastor and the books, but let's talk about what God's Word is saying. Yes, a verse. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, but uh, 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 and eventually she's like, I'm tired. I really cannot talk to any. I just need to, I need to rest. And I'm like, now that I take the Word of God out and we start looking at God's Word, now suddenly she's tired. But she can talk about the book all day. And about a pastor all day, and so he's like, okay, that's fine. I closed the book, smiled, and sat back and thanked the Lord for the opportunity. And um, we got into Johannesburg, we landed in Johannesburg, and we were full busy taxiing, taxiing up to the, to the gate. Now, there's been silence between her and me for maybe two hours, you know, because she was tired. I was tired too, you know, but so we taxiing up to the, to the gate and what have you, and, and she's like, oof, oof. Because there was an open seat between us, you know. So I said to her, "You doing? Are you okay?" She says, "No, I stepped on a, I stepped on a on a rusted piece of metal on in Mombasa on the beach, and I've got an infection in my foot. And me, that's not slow. I said, "Oh, and the Jesus and you allow you to step on a piece of." <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Never mind. She was mad. <laughs> Now, maybe a kinder word would have been made a bigger impression on her, or maybe that, just that word would maybe think about what she's doing and what she's saying, you know. I don't know. I hope she took in. the way I gave her some tracks and never heard from her again. But you see, that's why you and I need to preach the word. It's going to be offensive. People are not going to want to hear it, okay? And we don't come with man's in words of wisdom, and we don't come with enticing words, we don't delude the Word of God. We preach the Word of God and say, because the Word of God means what it says and says what it means. And that's why we need to preach it, because it's the Word of God that works, not man's wisdoms, of w w the words of our wisdom that works. What works, you know, I see people on the town, and I don't have a problem with it in, in the, to, the, to, the, to, to a degree. I don't have a problem with quoting memes and quotes from other people and wise words from other people. A lot of times people have said wise things and I think that's a good saying, you know. But when you become, you, you start quoting those things all the time and you, later, later on you're going to believe that's gospel. And when you believe it's gospel, there's no power in those things. There's no salvation in those things. It doesn't work in you. So you have to be careful about that. And they shall turn away their ears. And this, you know, you know, you understand who I'm talking about. You know, is doing some of those. And he's not the only guy. You know, maybe sincerely he's thinking he's doing God's service, but he's ignorant. In unbelief, he's a blasphemer. That's the reality of it. But shall lust themselves, teachers having itching ears. They don't want to hear the things we talked about that last week. I'm not going to go through this. Paul talks about 
Uh, let me see. And yeah, go with me back to Second Timothy. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto, unto fables. They shall turn away the ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Paul, in his day, in First Timothy, he's already talked about some has forsaken him. Some has turned away from him, because he's preaching the truth. In 2 Timothy, by the time he gets to 2 Timothy, towards the end of 2 Timothy, all in Asia has forsaken me. Not some, but all. That's the reality of when you start preaching the word. You're not going to be surrounded with thousands and thousands of people that stay with you and stick with you. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. So they will turn the ear from the truth. means they had it, but now they don't want it anymore. They don't want to hear it anymore. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15, he says, That this thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Harmagenus. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Nesiphorus, for he is oft refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chain. You know what happened with, what happened with, with, with Paul at the end of his ministry? People was ashamed of Paul. He was ashamed of because of his of because of his directness and his and his and his preaching the word of God. They got ashamed of him. Even Timothy got scared at the end and, and got fearful and was and, and could be ashamed because Paul tells Timothy there in verse eight of the same chapter, Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me the prisoner, his prisoner, but be the partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Why would these people turn from Paul and forsake him? The only reason is the truth. The only reason is the truth. They will turn away from him. Look at Zechariah. God talks about the nation of Israel in Zechariah. And I'm going to finish this this morning, if you, if you will bear with me. In Zechariah, if you go from, uh, um, from Matthew, you turn back to Malachi, and then you go in Zechariah chapter 7 and verse 11. Let's go from verse 8 there. Ze Zechariah chapter 7 verse 8. Talking about the nation of Israel. Again, do not forget, the passage we're reading right now is not a passage written about you or to you specifically, but it's a, pas it's a passage written about the nation of Israel, about the prophetic word, and about God's people. But it's for you. Take note of how God's people, as our examples, has dealt with God and His word. Verse 8 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of your imagine evil things against his brother for your, in your heart. But they refused to hearken, and pulled away the shoulder, and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, and the words of the Lord of hosts hath, hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. He says, the verse 11 says, But they refused to hearken, and have pulled away the shoulder and stop their ears. I like, I like the demonstration of that verse. When somebody don't want to hear you and you talk to them, they go, they, you know, no, I don't want to hear, no, I don't want to hear you. You know, when anybody, have you ever spoken to somebody and they, when you talk to them, they do that. They pull their shoulder. What is it? They're offended by you. You're in their personal space now. You've walked into a place where they're going to be, they feel offended now, they feel you enter their personal space, and you need to get back, back off. And so when God's prophet comes to the nation of Israel, he's going to prophesy to them and speak to them the word of God and the law of God, what do they do? We'll not hear you. Stop our ears. We have a similar thing happening here in, 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 in the book of Acts chapter 7. In Acts chapter 7, by the way, you like my picture here, okay? Not my picture, I just got it from the internet, from somebody else used that. But sound doctrine, the door's empty, nobody's running in there. But you look itching ears, and they're just packing it out. I hope they all wear masks. 
okay? <laughs> There's no social distancing there. Well, there's very little here too. But anyway, uh, now I'm stirring the pot. That's all I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> but in, in Acts chapter 7, they stopped their ears when Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost, is speaking to the elders, to speaking to the leadership of Israel and says, you have crucified him. you just like your fathers. You resist the Holy Ghost. You're just like your fathers. You know, you're, you're an abominous people. You're an adulterous nation. And they stop their ears. I don't want to, we don't want to hear you anymore. Stop. And that's what's going to happen in the church, the body of Christ. People will stop their ears because they don't want to hear the truth anymore. They will rather want to hear fables. Cunningly crafted fables. That's the reality it's going to be. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto what? You had the truth, you hear the truth, and what do you do? You turn your ears away from the truth and you would rather listen to smooth sayings, fables, things that's going to tickle my ear. That's what I'm rather going to listen to. Fables are stories that may have an element of truth, but it doesn't, it is not the truth. It may contain an element of the truth. And let me tell you something, every doctrine that is not sound doctrine, that is preached from your Bible and by preachers today, contains an element of truth. But it's not sound doctrine, because it's been diluted. It's been diluted and it's been adapted and invented to please the beerers. People say, thus saith the scripture, and they quote a scripture to you out of context, and they preach a whole message about that, that God's word is praying to you. It's just a fable. It's an invented. Look at Second Peter. Look at Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one and verse sixteen. Peter's writing to this little flock of the of the of, the, of, the, of Israel, believing remnant of the nation of Israel. Look at what he says in verse 16. Carefully look at verse 16. He says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So apparently, to these people, there are people that's coming, talking to them, and sharing with them cunningly devised fables. Somebody took some time to figure out how to be cunning and create a fable and devise it, which is not, which is contrary to sound doctrine. You hear what I'm saying? And there's people today that's preaching cunningly devised fables and they're preaching it because they've turned their ears from the truth and, and then they're rather going to have cunningly devised fables that they're going to teach. Let me tell you something about cunningly devised uh, 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 fables is that they have their origin in the Jewish teachings of God's Word, in the prophetic Word. Where's the prophetic Word? Genesis to Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They have their origin in there, and then they've been devised from there to be preached. And to turn you away from the truth. Where they go from sound doctrine to false doctrine. Look at what Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I believe that every cunningly devised fable that the church is preaching today has its origin in the scripture. By the way, you know what? If you look at religions throughout the world, most religions out of the world has their origin in scripture. They just, they just devised it and made fables. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 4, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. So these genealogies and these fables and endless genealogy, where does it come from? 
or origin of script of, of the Jewish passages. Everybody wants to trace them back south, back to, to Abraham. Paul says, don't give attention to all this stuff. We look at things that are ahead of us, not behind us. In Titus chapter 1, look at Paul says in Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1 and verse 14. Let's go read for verse 10, from verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. You see the circumcision? Who's the circumcision? The Jews, Israel. Whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not to, for filthy lucre's sake. They serve their own bellies. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own set, the creatures are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Titus' job, Titus job the job that Titus have, is to preach the word and, to, and, 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 and preach the word in such a way that they will not give heed to, the church won't give heed to Jewish fables. Let me tell you something, the church is full of Jewish fables. We tend to say that people are preaching, you know, and that Jewish fables is, is cunningly devised, it's, it's cunningly devised so that the truth is not preached and offense is not being given. Promises to Israel is preached today, but let me tell you something. If somebody was preaching the, prophet, the, the, book of, uh, uh, the word of prophecy from the Old Testament or Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? This is what's happening when they preach from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the way I see it. If everybody is going to preach purely the doctrine that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is giving you, all the prophets in time past, which is now fulfilled in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if they were preaching that purely, I don't have a problem with that anybody preaching that purely, according to the word rightly divided, because that will bring me to my gospel, the mystery. But if they, if, they, if they piecemeal out of that, cunningly piecemeal out of that, that's a cunningly devised fable. It's not the truth. Because if somebody's going to preach the truth, it's going to bring you to further truth. Not take you away from the truth. You hear what I'm saying to you? Because anybody that understands the doctrine that is to Israel, the nation of Israel, God, I have to ask them, but what about us Gentiles? When Christ was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah, I get that. But what about us? And that will bring me further to the scripture to Christ because it's going to bring me to his resurrection. And if it's bringing me to his resurrection, it's going to bring me to the book of Acts. And it's going to, the book of Acts is going to say they rejected his resurrection and then Saul gets saved and God gives to him a mystery. That will just lead me to further truth. But if you teach us stuff in time past, piecemeal out of that, cunning to devise fables out of that, you don't get the full truth. So you get a fable that contains some truth in it, but it's not the truth. You understand what I'm saying? I hope it makes sense. Cunning to devise fables, Jewish fables. And by the way, the problem with the nation of Israel was and the fact that they were such a nation as they took God's Lord and they changed it to fit their own needs. Cunningly devised. You and I are called to preach the word. Uh, we should be careful about these guys. And in closing this morning, they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned onto fables. Fables are something that Satan and his cronies like to preach. These guys, it's just ministers. He's so-called ministers of righteousness. In closing, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says in verse 4, for if they that cometh preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he received another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, he might well bear with him. Because they're not preaching that the simplicity of it, verse 3 it says that is in Christ. They preach another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. Now look at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no, no marvel... Okay. 
For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of what? Of light. Talk about his devices. Therefore it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So whoever is going to preach fables and when they're going to turn their ears from the truth onto fables, they're going to have preachers that's going to stand in front of them that's going to be seemingly like a minister of righteousness, but they're not preaching the truth of God's word. They just preach en- just enough that there's some contain some scriptures, but it is not rightly divided and it's not sound doctrine. And that's how you're going to be deceived. Because if I want to deceive you this morning, I cannot come out rightly and tell you. I have to be very cunning, like serpent-wise. Yeah, he hath God said. Hath God said, really? Cunningly devised. So that he can get to her pride. So that's what's going to happen in the church. They're going to turn their ears from the truth. And it will turn on to fables. Let's pray that this had not happened to us. Let's pray for that. Let's pray would we stay true to the sound doctrine. That we would with Paul fight the good fight of faith. With Paul finish the course. With Paul keep the faith. Because not many will. Not many will. Not many has. And so that's why you and I are called to preach the word. I, my job is to preach the word. I, I, my job is not to preach to you what you want to hear. My job is to preach the word. That's it. And I have to be very careful that when I preach the word to you, that I don't preach what I want, I want you to hear because I maybe don't like something that you do. And now I just preach to you about that because you're offended. I have to be careful about that because a lot of times that comes in the way of preachers too. We need to preach the word and stick with it. That's why I like when we preach through books. Because I am forced to stick with a theme of the book. Alright? Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your word. We're thankful that it works in us effectually it believes. We pray that as a church we will never turn our ears from the truth. We pray that we will not be turned to fables. But we'll hold on to sound doctrine. Hold forth the word of life. Working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And knowing that it's you that work and will and do in us according to your good pleasure. Commit our fellowship of saints here this morning. Those that are not with us. Those that are listening online. And those that are going to look on YouTube. Thank you for them all. We pray that we will all be edified to your praise and to your glory. We pray this by Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.